In this video, we're going to be talking about the simple spending multiplier formula. To understand what the multiplier is and how it helps us analyze macroeconomic decisions, we must first start with some concepts known as the marginal propensities to consume and save. Now, this is a very fancy sounding term, but it's not that complicated. We're going to start by defining the marginal propensities to consume and save, and then we're going to talk about how the Keynesian spending multiplier can be used to estimate the impact of any change in spending in a country's economy on the economy's total GDP. Let's start with our definition of the marginal propensity to consume. So you'll recall from microeconomics, which I'm guessing you've already studied, that marginal is another word for additional. Another word you need to know the definition of is propensity. Propensity is a word that I compare to likelihood. It's the likelihood that you will do something. So I have a propensity to ride my bike as often as possible. It means I'm likely to ride my bike whenever I get the chance. So the marginal propensity to consume refers to the likelihood that an individual will consume with additional income. So consume, you'll recall from macroeconomics, is household spending. This is just household spending on goods and services. So what is the likelihood that a household will buy goods and services with additional income? That's the marginal propensity to consume. So the MPC, let's define this now, is the amount of additional consumption resulting from a change in consumer's income. In other words, if a household's income changes by a certain amount, how much will its consumption change by? That's going to tell us the marginal propensity to consume. And the simple formula for the MPC is to measure the change in consumption, that's delta C, as a ratio of household's change in income. Now don't worry, we'll walk through a numerical example over here in just a couple of minutes. So when households' disposable incomes rise, there are essentially two things they can do with the additional income that they've experienced. They can consume or buy goods and services, or they can save. So the marginal propensity to save is another important term in our lesson here, and that is the MPS, which measures the amount of additional savings resulting from a change in income. In other words, when household incomes rise by a certain amount, how much will their savings increase by? Or in the reverse, if household incomes fall by a certain amount, how much will their savings decrease by? This ratio of the change in savings, delta S, over the change in income, delta Y, tells us the marginal propensity to save. The likelihood that households will save an additional amount of income that they earn. So one thing to point out in this simple understanding of how consumers will respond to changes in income is that there are really only two things consumers can do following a change in income. They can consume with that money or they can save that money. So our assumption, therefore, is that the marginal propensity to consume plus the marginal propensity to save equals one. Now, in a more complex model, there are other things that households can do, other leakages besides savings that we would take into account, such as spending on imports, which is like savings, a leakage from a country's circular flow of income, and taxation, although we're assuming here that this is after-tax income. So how do consumers spend or save their income that they enjoy following an increase in income or a decrease in income after taxes have been taken into account? So with this information, the marginal propensities to consume and save, we have all that we need in order to estimate what we call the Keynesian spending multiplier. Now, you might have heard the, the word Keynesian before because we've already studied the Keynesian aggregate supply curve earlier in this unit. This is, of course, named after economist John Maynard Keynes, who came up with the formula that we're about to see. The Keynesian spending multiplier tells us the amount by which an increase in spending in a country will impact total aggregate demand. So that sounds kind of weird because you'd say, well, if spending increases by, let's say, a million dollars, aggregate demand increases by a million dollars. But in fact, it's not so simple. So let's walk through a quick example here. Let's assume that the government increases spending in a country by a million dollars. How does that million dollars impact overall aggregate demand? 
Well, because an economy acts like a circular flow, that initial $1 million leads to an increase in household incomes of $1 million. Now we're gonna to start to see how the multiplier effect works. That increase in household income will lead to an increase in consumption and an increase in savings. But this increase in consumption is going to lead to an increase in household incomes again, which due to the circular flow of income will lead to further increases in consumption and increases in savings. In this way, a dollar spent is a dollar earned, a proportion of which will be spent again and earned again by somebody else. The circular flow dictates that a dollar, once it's spent in an economy, will be earned by somebody else and a proportion will be spent again. That proportion that will be spent is determined by the marginal propensity to consume. So with this marginal propensity to consume, we can come up with the multiplier formula. And the abbreviation we're going to use for the Keynesian spending multiplier is a little k for Keynes. And this formula is 1 over 1 minus the MPC. Or a simpler way to express that, because 1 minus the MPC equals the marginal propensity to save, it's 1 over the marginal propensity to save. So let's go through an example here on the right. We have a country that starts with an income of $1,000. At this income level, households are spending $700 and saving $300. Very simple model here. What happens when income rises to $1,100? We can calculate the marginal propensity to consume and the marginal propensity to save using our formulas that we introduced over here. So let's first calculate the marginal propensity to consume. We need to find the change in consumption. As incomes rise by $100, consumption rises from $700 to $780. And incomes have risen from $1,000 to $1,100. This gives us a marginal propensity to consume of 80, that's 780 minus 700, over 100, that's 1,100 minus 1,000 which is 0 0.8. Now we can quickly calculate the marginal propensity to save. We can see that savings increases by $20 as a result of a $100 increase in income, giving us a marginal propensity to save of 20 over 200, which is 0 0.2. Notice that, of course, the MPC plus the MPS is 0 0.8 plus 0 0.2, which equals 1. In other words, Households will either save or spend 100% of any increase in income that they enjoy. So with this marginal propensity to consume, 0 0.8, we can calculate the size of the spending multiplier in this country, the Keynesian spending multiplier. So let's use our 0 0.8 for our MPC and plug it into this formula. So for this country, K is 1 over 1 minus 0 0.8 or 1 over the marginal propensity to save, which is 0 0.2, and 1 divided by 0 0.2, 0 0.2 goes into 1 five times. This is a Keynesian spending multiplier of 5. We know that any change, let's just take a little note here, any change in spending, and there are four types of aggregate expenditures, that's consumption, investment, government spending, or net exports, will be multiplied five times throughout the economy. Meaning that the ultimate change in real GDP in a country that experiences an initial change in spending of X dollars will be 5X. For example, let's do one example. So let's assume government spending increases by $2 billion. This will lead to a change in GDP of 2 billion times 5 or 10 billion dollars. Again, we're going to walk through some more examples of how the multiplier works and how it can be illustrated using an ADAS diagram in our next video. In this video, we introduce the concepts of the marginal propensities to consume and save, which tell us the likelihood that households will spend or save any additional income that they've earned, after taxes, of course. 
using these marginal propensity formulas, we derived the Keynesian spending multiplier formula, which is a function of the MPC and the MPS. The higher a country's marginal propensity to consume, the higher the value of the Keynesian spending multiplier because any change in spending the economy will lead to larger increases in consumer spending as income is earned by households. If the marginal propensity to consume is smaller, let's do one example here. If MPC equals only 0.5, then the multiplier K equals one over 0.5 or two. So you can see that when households spend a smaller proportion of any new income that they earn, this is going to result in a smaller multiplier meaning that any change in spending in the economy will lead to a smaller overall change in GDP. Here we go. One step at a time, don't be living on